Hello, folks. I am still on my galaxy binge, and right now I am going after M81, Bode's Galaxy. And I'm only doing 30 second exposures with my luminance filter, and I've got a CLS, even with the CLS filter in front of it to catch some light pollution. Um, I, 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 my ADU, my mean readout here, is still higher than I want it to be at 2296. But you know what? I'm going to go with it. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to do a lot of exposures. Um, when, I, when the exposures are that short, I need a lot of them to add up. And uh, let's take a look at my guiding. Uh, 0.45. That's about as good as it gets for me. Um, but I'm pointing to the north, and my guiding, like I've always said, is always better in the north. And... Uh, this one's going to take me probably two or three days to finish, and we'll see how it comes out. I will see you later. Okay, a few days have passed, and if you saw how good my guiding was that night, on the very next night, it was terrible. I was getting big RA spikes, and I recalibrated PHD2, and that seemed to fix it. So... I actually lasted a month without having to recalibrate PHD2, so that's good to know. It, it saves a little time, you know, each night if you can skip that part. The only thing that surprised me is that it, there was no gradual decline from good to bad. It was just good one night, terrible the next night. So you know, maybe my polar alignment was off that night. I don't know. But anyway, uh, let's start looking at my data. In all, I had around 10 hours of data, around 7 hours for loom, that's my loom data right here, and about 70 minutes each for RGB, that's my red data, my green data, and blue. And it looks pretty clean, so I can't complain about that. I remember, I think it was uh, my, my last couple of galaxies, I was using... CLS instead of the loom filter and it was really sort of it had um, maybe reflections in there the, the background didn't look good on that data but now I, I'm back to using loom but I do have a two inch CLS filter in front of all of these just because you know I think I'm borderline between a red zone and a white zone uh, I, I need some kind of protection for, for light pollution and let's look at my other data now So this is my RGB data, and uh, after I did a color calibration, it looked like that. So that's a little improvement. This was kind of scary looking. I didn't like the looks of this data at all, but the, the color calibration and background neutralization really helped. So um, that's that. And after I added um, luminance to it, it, this is what I've got. It, it came in, of course, as expected, a lot stronger. Um, still not very colorful, but I think colorful enough to work with. And after I did my final processing, um, this is what I've got. Let's, let's compare the two. Um, you know, it would have been nice to see extra nebulosity around here, like I see in other people's pictures, but, it, it, you know, in... With my light pollution, there's no way, even after 10 hours of data, I'm not going to pick that up. It might probably take me 100 hours if I'm lucky. Who knows? But that's what it looks like. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I don't really have a lot of experience with LRGB. I spend so much time with broadband, so I, I, I need to hone my skills. And I may come back to this at some point, but for now, I think this is probably printable. On metal, it's not that bad. I, I came up with a lot of other versions of this, and some were looking too purple. But I, th I think that this is the one I'm, I settled with. Um, it will have to do. Well, this is uh, the third galaxy I've captured uh, since the moon has been gone in this cycle, and I believe it or not, I have a fourth galaxy on the way. So I'm going to wrap this one up and, and start processing the next one. So. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you later.